Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this session we are going to learn about slow running queries due to log weights in SQL Server. We will learn what is log weight and how and why it occurs and I will show you how to troubleshoot this type of issues when you face them. Let's get started. So you detected a slow running query in your server. What you should do next always. The first step to troubleshoot slow running query is to identify whether a query is spending time on CPU or waiting for other resources. If we find query is spending time on waiting rather than running on CPU, the next step should be to find what type of weight it is. There are several type of weights. As you can see, main weight types are log, memory weight, and also IO weight, network weight, latch weight, and scheduler yield weights. You often see this kind of weights while troubleshooting slow running queries. I'm going to create sessions for each type of these weights, explain what is this weight and how does this kind of weight happens, how to troubleshoot them in my future series. But what if we find that query is running ra rather than waiting, running on CPU I mean. In this case there are two points we should check. Is it query running because of long query plan compilation or is it query taking so much time for execution? Maybe we need to improve our query. About these two points also, I'm going to make detailed videos. In this video specifically, we will concentrate on slow performance due to log weights. Firstly, let's speak briefly about why we need logs in SQL Server. Imagine we have a table with following rows, and we have five users running update, insert, and select queries against this same row at the same time. So, if we allow all these users access that data at the same time, our data becomes inconsistent or corrupted. So in order to keep integrity consistency of the data, in this case, we implement logs. For example, the first user take exclusive log on this row object. This log ensures that no other user or session cannot access this object until the log is released. In other words, other users just wait this log release. Other users also follow the same flow. Wait log, take log, and release log when they are finished. I have another video on locking in SQL Server. If you want to more deeply understand how locking works in SQL Server, please refer to that. So let's get back to our main topic here. Long log wait. Long log wait occurs when one session or user holds a log on a specific resource for a long time and a second session attempts to acquire a conflicting log type on the same resource. By conflicting log I mean incompatible logs. If we look at this table, we can see that if a session holds exclusive log, no other transactions can acquire a log of any kind shared, update, or exclusive on that resource until the exclusive log is released. Alternatively, if shared log has been applied to a resource, other transactions can also acquire a shared log or an update log on that item even if the first transaction has not completed. In other words, in the case of shared log, blocking or long log wait probability is less. Now we understand how blocking happens. Let's concentrate on troubleshooting blocking. We identified query is in waiting status, mostly due to log weight. What is next step? Regardless of which blocking situation we are in, the methodology for troubleshooting locking is the same. First, we identify the main blocking session, I mean head blocker. Then we find the query and transaction that's causing the blocking. We analyze and under, try to understand that query, then we will try to resolve blocking issue by redesigning query and transaction. Let's do this each step with actual examples in SSMS. For demo purposes, I'm using publicly available database AdventureWorks in SQL Server 2019. First, we set isolation level to repeatable read. Then simply we run select statement, okay? Let's start another session and run update statement for the same rows, but do not commit transaction. This means that the log is not being released in this transaction. 
Let's move to another session and run select statement now in two sessions, okay? As you can see, since we did not commit transaction in update statement, select statements in both sessions keeps on running. In other words, they are keep on waiting. We reproduced blocking issue. Now let's switch to troubleshooting this issue. The first step is to find whether our query is waiter or runner, as we talked, right? For this, we run the below query. As you can see, our query is waiting. This is a total duration and CPU time is very little, but wait time is huge, right? So what does this mean? This means our query is waiting for something. If we look at wait type, we will understand that our query's wait type is log ms. Log ms means there is a blocking issue in our case. And log ms means that our query is trying to read data and waiting to acquire a shared log for this. As long as you see this kind of log, you should understand that there is a log wait problem in your server. Next step is to identify who is blocker. As we can see, session 58 is being blocked by session 54. And session 54 is at the same time being blocked by session 57. These sessions, two sessions 58 and 54 are two select statements we run one after another. So therefore, one is block being blocked by another one. So here we can understand that the head blocker is session 57. Here session 57 is not visible because it is not actively running. Let's try, try to find out what is this head blocker doing. For this, we can easily run sysdm exec input buffer with session number or simply sp who to. Okay, I usually run two of them. As you can see, session 57 is in sleeping status, waiting for a command input. The command being run in the session is update statement. You can see here. Now we understand that the head blocker is running update statement, but not completing being left in sleeping status because of some reasons. If it's really hard to find head blocker, I often use this command. As you can see, block by column in head blocker stays null. In this way, we can easily find head blocker. T-SQL is one way of finding head blocker. Another way is ready tool, standard reports in SQL Server. For this, we go to properties of the server, go to standard reports, then all blocking transaction activities. Firstly, you see head blocker. If you maximize this, you will be able to see sessions which this head blocker is blocking. Okay? You can see T-SQL comments also here. But often the head blocker T-SQL is not visible. But uh, if you want to see uh, the main head blocker's session ID, we can use uh, other ways to see the T-SQL, right? So uh, this is just very useful if you want to know head blocker easily. Suppose blocking is not happening now. It happened before or it might happen in the future. We don't know when it happens. To troubleshoot this kind of scenarios, we use traces. We just create a session by adding block to process report events. Then, if we just look at live session, we will be able to see blocking sessions and details. Who is blocker and uh, blocking what? Now we understood who is blocker and what is it doing, right? Next, let's investigate why blocking is happening. In our case, by looking at request status, which is null, and session status, which is sleeping, we can understand that blocker session is not running any request and just sleeping. This is one indication that 
some kind of orphaned transaction or uncommitted transaction is being run. We can also confirm by looking at the query. Okay, here we can see that there is no commit transaction, commit uh, SQL word. And also this blocker has taken lock on the key. And uh, I, I want to point out that the resource here can be table, page, and row. Okay. If you face this type of queries, you either kill this or run commit. Uncommitted transaction is one of the causes of blocking. Another cause is wrongly chosen isolation level. For example, if we choose read committed as isolation level instead of repeatable read in our case, we would be able to run select query. Depending on your application requirements, you should select less restrictive isolation level to prevent any kind of blocking. Next cause is high degree of parallelism. When you execute your query with high degree of parallelism, more than one thread is created per query, increasing the chance of log conflict. Therefore, decreasing parallelism is one of the ways of dealing with blocking. Another cause is wrongly designed query, of course. Try to create small, fast executing queries instead of long running B queries. Okay. Also, I saw many systems are using one of the, uh, one system for OLAP and OLTP purposes at the same time, which is also one of the cause of blocking. Uh, you run, for example, updates different kind of um, data change queries and at the same time you use this server for select queries okay in this case uh, you can try to implement read replica by using always on cluster to try to isolate OLAP and OLTP services finally i also saw sudden outage with applications causing non-closed orphan transactions this is somewhat related to our case uncommitted transaction right if you want to see any orphaned or uncommitted transactions, you can just run select current train count and find those sessions and kill them. Okay. So in this video, we understood how to classify a long running query into waiter and runner. Afterwards, we learned how to identify log weight related blocking sessions. Afterwards, we learned how to identify log weight related blocking sessions. Specifically, we learned how to find blocking sessions for the current running and past queries or future queries also, right? By using event sessions. Furthermore, we discussed about main causes of blocking and how to resolve them. In the next section, I'm going to talk about memory weights. Please do not forget to subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.